Okay, friends, here we go with Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Chapter 4, The Keeper of the Keys. Boom, they knocked again. Dudley jerked awake. Where's the cannon, he said stupidly. There was a crash behind them, and Uncle Vernon came skidding into the room. He was holding a rifle in his hands. Now they knew what had been in the long, thin package he had brought with them. Who's there, he warned. I warn you, I'm armed. There was a pause, then smash. The door was hit with such force that it swung clean off its hinges and with a deafening crash landed flat on the floor. A giant of a man was standing in the doorway. His face was almost completely hidden by a long shaggy mane of hair and a wild tangled beard, but you could make out his eyes glinting like black beetles under all the hair. The giant squeezed his way into the hut, stooping so that his head just brushed the ceiling. He bent down, picked up the door, and fitted it easily back into its frame. The noise of the storm outside dropped a little. He turned to look at them all. Couldn't make us a cup of tea, could ya? It's not been an easy journey. He strode over to the sofa where Dudley sat frozen with beer. Budge up, you great lump, said the stranger. Dudley squeaked and ran to hide behind his mother, who was crouching, terrified, behind Uncle Vernon. Any ears, Harry, said the giant. Harry looked up into the fierce, wild, shadowy face and saw that the beetle eyes were crinkled in a smile. Last time I saw you, it was only a baby, said the giant. You look a lot like your dad, but you've got your mom's eyes. Uncle Vernon made a funny, rasping noise. I demand you leave at once, sir, he said. You are breaking and entering. Ah, shut up, Dursley, a great prune, said the giant. He reached over the back of the sofa, jerked the gun out of Uncle Vernon's hands, bent it into a knot as easily as if it had been made of rubber, and threw it into a corner of the room. Uncle Vernon made another funny noise, like a mouse being trodden on. Anyway, Harry, said the giant, turning his back on the Dursleys, a very happy birthday to you. Got something for you here. I might have sat on it at some point, but it'll taste all right. From an inside pocket of his black overcoat, he pulled a tightly squashed box. Harry opened it with trembling fingers. Inside was a large, sticky chocolate cake with Happy Birthday Harry written on it in green icing. Harry looked up at the giant. He meant to say thank you, but the words got lost on the way to his mouth, and what he said instead was, Who are you? The giant chuckled. True, I haven't introduced myself. Rubius Hagrid, keeper of keys and grounds at Hogwarts. He held out an enormous hand and shook Harry's whole arm. What about that tea then, eh? He said, rubbing his hands together. I'd not say no to something stronger if you got it, mind. His eyes fell on the empty grate with the shriveled chip bags in it, and he snorted. He bent down over the fireplace. They couldn't see what he was doing, but when he drew back a second later, there was a roaring fire there. It filled the whole damp hut with flickering light, and Harry felt the warmth wash over him as though he'd sunk into a hot bath. The giant sat back down on the sofa, which sagged under his weight, and began taking all sorts of things out of his pockets of his coat. A copper kettle, a squashy package of sausages, a poker, a teapot, several chipped mugs, and a bottle of some amber liquid that he took a swig from before starting to make tea. Soon the hut was full of the sound and smell of sizzling sausage. Nobody said a thing while the giant was working, but as he slid the first six fat, juicy, slightly burnt sausages from the poker, Dudley fidgeted a little. Uncle Vernon said sharply, Don't touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The giant chuckled darkly. Your great puddin' of a son don't need fattening anymore, Dursley. Don't worry. He passed the sausages to Harry, who was so hungry he had never tasted anything so wonderful, but he still couldn't take his eyes off the giant. Finally, as nobody seemed about to explain anything, he said, I'm sorry, but I still don't really know who you are. The giant took a gulp of tea and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Call me Agrid, he said. Everybody does. And like I told you, I'm keeper of keys at Hogwarts. You'll know all about Hogwarts, of course. Er, no, said Harry. Hagrid looked shocked. Sorry, Harry said quickly. Sorry, barked Hagrid, turning to stare at the Dursleys, who shrank back into the shadows. It's them as should be sorry. I knew you weren't getting your letters, but I never thought you wouldn't even know about Hogwarts for crying out loud. Did you never wonder where your parents learned it all? All what? asked Harry. All what? Hagrid thundered. Now wait just one second. He had leapt to his feet. In his anger, he seemed to fill the whole hut. The Dursleys were cowering against the wall. 
Do you mean to tell me, he growled at the Dursleys, that this boy, this boy, knows nothing about, about anything? Harry thought this was going a bit far. He had been to school, after all, and his marks weren't bad. I know some things, he said. I can, you know, do math and stuff. But Hagrid simply waved his hand and said, about our world, I mean, your world, my world, your parents' world. What world? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. Dursley, he boomed. Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like mimblewimble. Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But you must know about your mom and dad, he said. I mean, they're famous. You're famous. What? My, my mom and dad weren't famous, were they? You don't know. You don't know. Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. You don't know what you are, he said finally. Uncle Vernon suddenly found his voice. Stop, he commanded. Stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell the boy anything. A braver man than Vernon Dursley would have quailed under the furious look Hagrid now gave him. When Hagrid spoke, his every syllable trembled with rage. You never told him? You never told him what was in the letter Dumbledore left for him? I was there. I saw Dumbledore leave it, Dursley, and you kept it from him for all these years? Kept what from me, said Harry eagerly. Stop! I forbid you, yelled Uncle Vernon in panic. Aunt Petunia gave a gasp of horror. Ah, go boil your heads, both of you, said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. There was silence inside the hut. Only the sea and the whistling wind could be heard. I'm a what? gasped Harry. A wizard, of course, said Hagrid, sitting back down on the sofa, which groaned and sank even lower. And a thumping good un, I'd say, once you trained up a bit. With a mum and dad like yours, what else could you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letter. Harry stretched out his hand at last to take the yellowish envelope, addressed in emerald green to Mr. H. Potter, the floor, hut on the rock, the sea. He pulled out the letter and read, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Headmaster Albus Dumbledore, Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sorcerer, Chief Warlock, Supreme Mugwump, International Confederation of Wizards. Dear Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed a list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins on September 1. We await your owl by no later than July 31. Yours sincerely, Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress. Questions exploded inside Harry's head like fireworks, and he couldn't decide which to ask first. After a few minutes, he stammered, What does it mean they await my owl? Gal and galp and gorgons, that reminds me, said Hagrid, clasping a hand to his forehead with enough force to knock over a cart horse. And from yet another pocket inside his overcoat, he pulled an owl, a real, live, rather ruffled looking owl, a long quill, and a roll of parchment. With his tongue between his teeth, he scribbled a note that Harry could read upside down. Dear Professor Dumbledore, given Harry his letter, taking him to buy his things tomorrow, weather's horrible. Hope you're well, Hagrid. Hagrid rolled up the note, gave it to the owl, which clamped it in its beak, went to the door, and threw the owl out into the storm. Then he came back and sat down as though this was as normal as talking on the telephone. Harry realized his mouth was open and closed it quickly. Where was I, said Hagrid, but at that moment Uncle Vernon, still ashen-faced but looking very angry, moved into the firelight. He's not going, he said. Hagrid grunted. I'd like to see a great muggle like you stop him, he said. A what? said Harry, interested. A muggle, said Hagrid. It's what we call non-magic folk like them. And it's your bad luck you grew up in a family of the biggest muggles I ever laid eyes on. We swore when we took him in we'd put a stop to that rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. We swore we'd stamp it out of him, wizard indeed. You knew, said Harry. You knew I'm a, a wizard? New, shrieked Aunt Petunia suddenly. New? Of course we knew. How could you not be? My dreaded sister being what she was. Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to that, that school and came home every vacation with her pockets full of frog spawn, turning teacups into rats. I was the only one who saw her for what she was, a freak. 
But for my mother and father, oh no, it was Lily this and Lily that. They were proud of having a witch in the family. She stopped to draw a deep breath and then went ranting on. It seemed as if she'd been waiting to say all this for years. Then she met that potter at school and they left and got married and had you. And of course I knew you'd be just the same, just as strange, just as, as abnormal. And then if you please, she went and got herself blown up and we landed with you. Harry had gone very white. As soon as he found his voice, he said, blown up. You told me they died in a car crash. Car crash, roared Hagrid, jumping up so angrily that the Dursleys scuttled back into their corner. How could a car crash kill Lily and James Potter? That's an outrage, a scandal. Harry Potter not knowing his own story when every kid in our world knows his name. But why? What happened? Harry asked urgently. The anger faded from Hagrid's face. He looked suddenly serious. I never expected this, he said in a low, worried voice. I had no idea when Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting hold of you, how much you didn't know. Ah, uh, Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you, but someone's gotta. You can't go off to Hogwarts without knowing. He threw a dirty look at the Dursleys. Well, it's best you know as much as I can tell you, mind. I can't tell you everything. It's a great mystery parts of it.